Trochri consists of a cluster of a dozen houses. Although unassuming, Trochri hides a royal history. Just visible in the centre of this hamlet is the stump of the old Trochri castle, perhaps built around 1160, when Malcolm IV gave the lands as a gift to Duncan, 6th Earl of Fife, both familiar names in Scottish history through Shakespeare's Macbeth. The lands which stretched down from here to Dunkeld remained theirs until 1389, when they came into the hands of Robert II. This Robert fathered many children, mostly illegitimately, one of whom was the Wolf of Badnoch, the swashbuckling Robin Hood or Indiana Jones of his day. His proud effigy lies behind the altar in Dunkeld Cathedral. In May 1499, King James IV handed over some of the land and the castle to William I, Lord Ruthven, and thence on to the Earls of Gowrie. How the king's descendants must have rued the day. On the 5th of August 1600, the then Earl of Gowrie and his brother Alexander had been hunting at Trochry and perhaps part of the plan to assassinate the king might have been hatched here. Alexander had lured James from hunting at Falkland Palace in Fife to the Gowrie family house in Perth, Gowrie House. The story is muddled in history, but as grandsons of the Earl who killed Mary Queen of Scots' servant Rizzio, they were probably intent on restoring a Protestant king, ousting the Roman Catholic monarch. Although they nearly succeeded in the reign, both brothers were killed. In a macabre scene, the bodies were transported to the Parliament in Edinburgh, where they were propped up, tried, convicted of treason, and hanged. The lands they left were famous for supporting game for sport, and today Trochry continues that tradition as the central old building here, recently much extended, is the British Association for Shooting and Conservation, BASC, which employs several staff and is in the forefront of supporting country sports in Scotland, estimated to be worth £240 million annually to the Scottish economy. The BASC works alongside many organisations, including the Countryside Alliance, the RSPB, Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, the National Trust for Scotland and Scottish Natural Heritage. Trochry possessed several working mills. One made spindles for weaving from birch trees shipped out to India for the jute trade. Later this mill produced yarn for knitting socks and stockings as well as hand-woven woolens. Some weavers sent their wool parcels to Perth and then on to Aberdeen for walking, the washing and beating of the cloth by teams of women, often accompanied by singing. In order to dispatch the cloth for this finishing process, a lad was sent up to the road to stop anyone passing and offer them tuppence, which is less than one P in today's money, offer them tuppence for transporting the bundle as there was no public transport available. One day, a young lad new to the job stopped the first likely traveller who was driving a smart horse and carriage. He duly handed over two pennies and a bolt of wool. The driver was none other than Barclay Field, the wealthy shooting tenant at Drummoor Lodge, who, much amused, pointed out to his sister on his return that it was probably the first honest penny he had earned in a long time. Proceed on to the junction and then turn right onto the A85 stroke A822 signposted to Creef and Crean Larich. Go past the entrance to Trochry on your right and park just off the road to your left up a steep rough slope by a telephone exchange. <laughs> 